The Depth to Delve Deep by Will Ryder. Chapter 69, Sharkto. Road heads back to Bois de Boulogne. It will be his last night there. One of the security guards at the campground shines a light on him. He's fast asleep for the first time in a long time, only to be rudely awakened. It's bound to happen. His Italian friends with their big RVs left sometime during the day, leaving him exposed to the campground's gendarme. Security asks, where's your tent? Have you paid for the night? Rogue replies while pointing. Sleeping in that tent over there, where I was earlier, my girlfriend kicked me out. I'm sure she paid earlier. It seems to soften any suspicion, but the guard is inclined to shake the tent to make sure. It doesn't thank me, but Rogue knows he'll be back early in the morning. This story isn't going to stay. At first light, the following morning, Rote rolls up his sleeping bag and stuffs it into his backpack. He leaves nothing. He leaves not bothering to wait for the shuttle. Too much risk. He heads to the train station on foot. He knows where he wants to go. Chartres. It's touted to hold one of the finest of, of the Gothic cathedrals. Rote's not sure which train station has a track to Chartres. He's a bit confused. Too many garros to choose from. He finds the right one and is soon on board a train with his backpack to Chartres. It's an hour or so west of Paris. He buys a return ticket, though he might just stay. Rogue gets off the train station in Chartres. He walks with some folks from across the Atlantic, also on the way to see the cathedral. They walk and talk along the way, telling Rogue about their travels through Rome. Rogue would like to roam around Rome. They go their own ways by the time they reach the cathedral. Rogue marvels at how much the Gothic structure dominates the city of Chartres. For that matter, the entire landscape. The cathedral is built on an elevated mound a long time ago. Before it's built, it's believed that an oak grove gathered the druids. This is one of sa seven sacred sites. Inside the cathedral, Rope removes his backpack and leaves it beside the front entrance. Look, it looks like it hasn't been opened for years. He sees doors ten or so feet high with brass barred beams beholding two wooden doors standing sure. It's not a public entrance anymore, it seems... Through Rote's experiences, none of the old churches and cathedrals seen so far open the big front doors. They let tourists in through the little side doors. Rote reasons it must be to preserve the interior from the sun, wind, and rain. When Rote places his backpack in the darkened area by the grand doors, he bumps his head on the beam unseen in a darkened corner. It knocks the funk out of him. His eyes light up when they adjust to the cathedral's, cathedral's gothic realm. All negativity is left behind. There's so much to see, he wonders where to start. Maybe with the magnificent masonry and woodwork, not to mention the outside statuesque stone carvings contained in the cathedral's walls. He notices on the way in there are two spires, one 360 feet representing the sun and its solar year. The other one is 28 feet shorter. It represents the moon and its lunar month. He imagines the masons of the day and the people behind the architectural masterpiece mulling over their day's work thinks of the Knights Templars and the Catholic clergy, hierarchies well-versed in Celtic and Christian themes. Then Rope looks, looks down. Most of the time when in a Gothic cathedral, he looks up with barely a thought of looking down. In Chartres, that's one of the first thing he, things he does, and presumably everyone else does as well. It's hard not to. There laid out before him is a kind of Celtic knotted, knotted circle likened, likened to a mis -maze. A snake-like labyrinth coiled into a circuitous circle, fixed into the floor of the Gothic cathedral for all to traverse, and many do, judging by the worn nature. Chartres' labyrinth has a two-feet-wide footpath of shaped stone within a 222-foot circumference. There's a sacred lotus, sacred lotus in the center. Rowe learns about the trodden path's true representation. It's implied in its pilgrimage. Once a pilgrim or person plods their way through its winding ways, they are then worthy of a beautiful blessing. He's blessed just to be there, he thinks, as he goes along the path of the concentric, one-root circuited circle. Rogue plods the path like a pious pilgrim. It takes, it takes him 666 steps to the center, where a rosette-patterned six-petal lotus lies. Strange number. It seems almost satanic to me, sort. He leaves the inlaid lotus in the center of the circle. He heads onwards through the Gothic cathedral's many aisles, crossing the cross-shaped floor plan of the cathedral structure like an ankh. A 
chapel sits on either side of the transept north south cross. The cathedral floor plan is crowned with five chapels contouring the cathedral's ambulatory passageway. Forward from the choir, sacristy, apse, and ambulatory, the ambul is in absolute awe of it all. The entire Bible is re represented in all forms. Carved in wood, softened in stone, and stained on glass are the scriptures. The Last Supper is stage center, while the rest of the Bible is told in and out of every nook, molding, and cranny capital. The Mass is more often than not can't read. Rote looks up. He fawns over the awning of the arches, likened to the arcane analogy. Tall trees whose branches met to form cathedral arches over the path. He imagines the old oak groves. Rope bypasses the baptistry and walks up the spiraling staircase. It's so worn the steps sit like saddle seats. Soon he's set soon he's out on top of in out on top land on the top landing of one of the spires. It's a grand view of the valley surrounding the cathedral. Closer he sees the intricate detail in the stone statues fixed into the spire dome. He's not sure how exactly the masons managed to make the carvings up on a makeshift scaffold or on the ground before being hoisted up, or if the spire is one piece that's been whittled away to the present form, for some of the figures, if not all of them, seem to be of the spire, carved in like a totem pole. He gathers the masons, especially the ones back in the day, had their secrets. Rope mulls over the molding and the masonry involved in such a masterful. He heads back down through, though not before noticing the brass bell and all its medieval mechanisms. He takes one long, lasting look before heading out the auxiliary door. He'll leave his backpack where it is. It's hard to see it by the dark wooden doors barred with glass. Rote's lured into a tour of the cathedral's crypt at, the co at a cost. The crypt is, as he imagines it, wonderful. He fears falling into the water well, water well down in the crypt. It seems to have no bottom. The Veronica, the very cloth believed to have Christ's face imprinted on it, not the Shroud of Turin, the cloth to have wrapped Christ well in the tomb, lies within the water's wells, the water wells, stone wall. They're simple. He knows the Virgin's tunic, the cloth Mary wears while giving birth to Jesus, plays a part in rebuilding Chartres after it burns down the first time. The Catholic Church and clergy canon Canon the cloth as a pilgrim ploy to leave pilgrims penniless while Chartres coffers overflow. The road's refreshed after the tour. He's now seen three of the seven sacred spots. He'll see and pass by the vicinity of some others and head in a general direction of the rest. Like a holy pilgrimage, Hajj to Mecca, where the Muslim only has to pray in the direction to assuage an aspiration, so does Rot. What tops off his travel and tour of Chartres is the knowledge he's on another ley line. It lines Glastonbury, Chartres, and the Great Pyramid of Giza. He's been and seen all three, though the latter of the three stands as a glass pyramid replica positioned in the Louvre courtyard in Paris. It's early evening now, and he's not sure he'll be heading back to Paris. He walks around Chartres, trying to find a suitable place to roll out his bed. After hiking around the entire town and surrounding area, he realizes there's nowhere he can camp. Maybe underneath some of the old arch bridges. Unfortunately, they reek rot and refuse. Rote returns to Paris, 